Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I am Christine Dixon of The Ordinary Sacred. And as you can see, I am in a different location. This is not a green screen. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, porch area in the home that we are renting for a couple months here in Ecuador um, to rest and recuperate and heal. And my husband and I are loving it so much. Um, and as we have been here resting, I have been reading an absolutely wonderful book. So I wanted to share it with you and give you a little review. Um, it's called Listening When Parts Speak, A Practical Guide to Healing with Internal Family Systems Therapy and Ancestor Wisdom. It's by Tamala Floyd, and it is so, so good. Whether you are new to IFS or you're a veteran in IFS, it's excellent. Um, I probably wouldn't do a book review if I didn't like a book. <laughs> anyway, I'm only going to bring you the ones that I absolutely love. So kind of like I've gone over um, the Martha Sweezy book about IFS and uh, shame and guilt. I may in the future read several excerpts from this book because um, it's just so well written, so instructive, so inspiring. She gives many examples. So in this video, I just want to tell you about the book, um, hopefully inspire you to get it. If you can't get it, um, I'll, I'll be reading excerpts from it in the future. So like it says, like the title says, it's this incredible combination of internal family systems and ancestor wisdom. And so Tamala talks about how her main focus was in working with the BIPOC population. And she would end up inevitably running into a lot of um, what in, in IFS we call legacy burdens, burdens that were held by generations and generations from the past. And so she herself started doing ancestor work and it's actually quite an inspiring story because her ancestors are the ones who told her that she would write a book. And as it were, you know, she continued to try to do other things, right? To do one-on-one -on -one work, to um, eventually do audio recordings. And those things she found were, were difficult. The path was, had a lot of obstacles. But once she got on the track of writing this book, it's like the, the pathway was just cleared and it became very effortless. And so whether it was that her ancestors were helping her in that path or they just knew that this is the path for you and everything will get out of your way if you get on that path, I'm not sure. But um, it's hugely inspiring for me. As some of you know, I have been taking this uh, last summer, the last several months as a, a sabbatical had many, many stresses come up during that time. So it was kind of like uh, in fight or flight for a lot of that time. But in the last few weeks, have been able to come out of it and really process. And even I'll tell you at the end of this video, I did one of the exercises in this book to meet with some ancestors and was incredibly inspired. So first I want to tell you, though, that the way the book is set up, because not only is Tamala an exceptional communicator, um, those are usually the types of books that I prefer when the author has a, a voice and especially when they give lots of examples, lots of really specific, clear examples. And so the way the book is set up is that Tamala does teaching at the beginning, kind of presenting basic concepts in IFS. But it's interesting whether you know you're you're a beginner in IFS. It's very clear and concise and easily understandable. But it's also really interesting if you have known IFS and from and been using it for many years, because she gives these vibrant examples of her own life. I feel like she's very generous in that way. Um, for example, she talks about her people pleasing part who whose name is carefree. And that's who she was before she was burdened with this incessant need to please the person in front of her. 
And the story she tells is beautiful, um, you know, as an illustration of protective parts. And then she shares her example of uh, an exile that is called Crybaby. Um, both of these, her, her example of protector, one of the biggest protectors in my system, some of you know, is my Cassandra, my people pleasing part. And one of the biggest exiles in my system, Chrissy, was called too sensitive. You're a crybaby, all of that. And so I just really relate to Tamala in many ways, uh, growing up as a highly sensitive child. Um, so anyway, she gives very beautiful real life personal examples of the parts that live in her. And then she gives, and it's broken up beautifully also because my, my system really likes, excuse me, my system really likes, um, kind of seeing the breakdown of things. So I know kind of, um, maybe it's, I, I'm listening to the parts right now. It's parts that like to kind of predictability to know what's coming. Um, so there's a, the teaching section, which also has those examples in her, of her parts. And then there's these case vignettes of her clients. So kind of case studies, uh, and you can see that they're in kind of these gray. So even if you just want to read the case studies, which they're really fascinating to read. And some of them are pretty intense. And um, there's a lot of really, really intense trauma in them. Uh, and so you might have to work, you know, with your own parts that might get activated there. But then the next section are the meditations. And it's written out, you know, you can read it and but you can kind of get in a meditative state and follow it yourself. And what's brilliant about these is that Tamala explains that they were given to her by her ancestors. And it was, you know, like many people talk about when they write a book, you know, that, that it was, it came through her, that it didn't feel like it was from her. She would go in and meet with her ancestors and it was as if she was just being shown all of these scenes and and then she would write down the meditation and i can't remember how many are in here it's 12 or 16 or something like that but as soon as they were done they stopped coming that was it it was very clear that these are the meditations that were given to her and then she's generously sharing them with us and so um, each chapter has a meditation and then after you do the meditation she has journal exercises and other kind of organizers, you know, to help you process and write down, put on paper, what your experience was in the meditation. So that's how it's designed. And it goes through all the main concepts of IFS and includes ancestor work. And so the last thing I want to say is how, why mixing these two is so incredibly powerful. And so I'll tell you about my experience. It's, I um, can't remember what chapter, but it's, I think it's called the crystal cave with the ancestors. It's on page, the meditation is on page 85. And so I did this, um, I've done all the meditations in the book or I'm, I'm doing them as I go. And this one in particular was where she, she has you kind of meet with the ancestors and it's, it can be a, a visualization. Um, but even if you're a person that doesn't visualize, I encourage you to still try to go through it. And because you might experience your ancestors in different ways, you might feel their energy, you might uh, hear something, you might feel something in your inner around your body, uh, you might uh, just have different sensory experience. So for me, when I was at the, the opening of the cave, I was met by um a, i say a woman but it i just it felt very feminine energy a very very tall thin being that i've heard people with near death experience describe angels in this way so it's interesting but uh, and i wonder even when they experience those angels if they are their ancestors um but it was just just full of light had very feminine energy, very nurturing, very tender. And she was the one who guided me through 
this cave, deeper into the cave. And then when I got deep into the cave, uh, there was a fire and there was an old man um, kind of hunched over the fire. He had animal skins for clothing and he had horn, like a horned headdress. And it was very clear that he was a shaman type type of a person. He exuded wisdom and strength. So it's really interesting that the female ancestor had all these beautiful qualities of nurturing and tenderness and light. And he had this grounded, uh, strong wisdom. And so then what, what Tamala or what the ancestors invited her to do was to bring a part that felt active, that felt maybe really difficult to approach in the system. And so at the time I had what I call my mothering part that was feeling really overwhelmed and desperate. And so I invited her to come in front of the three of us, myself, this female ancestor and this male ancestor. And together, the three of us gave her attention, listened to her, loved on her, um, helped her. And so what Tamala explains and what I experienced in that meditation is that sometimes it can be really, really difficult to have enough self-energy, especially to go towards these really big, activated, overwhelmed parts. And so what we're doing is we're calling on the self-energy of our ancestors. And that combination of self-energy is incredibly powerful. It's very much like being in a group and doing IFS together, the collective self-energy if you've ever experienced that, it's incredibly powerful. So um, what I love about it is Tamil explains in the beginning that you can use this book in many, many different ways. If you are a therapist or a coach, you can offer it as homework for a client or go through it with them. Um, but if you are an individual and you just want to use the book on your own, that it works as well. So in this way, she's fulfilling one of one of Richard Schwartz's dreams, which is to bring internal family systems to um, the masses, right? To make it available to people. So, and that's a, a huge vision that I have as well. So I, I really, really love that. Last thing is, um, and I'll, I may make a video to talk more about this in the future, but um, one of the things that, my ancestors in a, in a different meditation, I've continued to meet with them um, and was just really asking them for wisdom about what to do with my work. And, um, and again, it was this invitation around the fire to all my parts that had worries and concerns and expectations around it. And one of the big things that my many of my parts really wanted and my ancestors really inspired was this move away from hustle culture and from I've got to make more money. I'm, I'm not going to survive unless I make more money. I had parts who had that scarcity kind of fear mentality, that burden. And um, so you'll hear that in the in the coming weeks that uh, my parts and I, along with my ancestors, have made this decision to give freely, essentially to give freely of this work um, and sustenance will come effortlessly. And so I will be making lots of uh, free offerings in the coming weeks, and I'll tell you uh, more about them very, very soon. But in the meantime, if you've been on the fence <laughs> about whether or not to get this book, Listening When Parts Speak, um, I highly, highly endorse it. And if you have any questions about my experience with this book or anything that I've talked about or any comments, please leave them in the comments below.